Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to round two of the Arok Formula Alpha Championship for 2023. We've got just over five minutes to go in qualifying here at Kyle Army. What a fantastic circuit uh, to be here at this evening. Uh, session currently being led by Alex Smith. Alex Smith, who we've just missed, unfortunately, right as we joined back in, uh, set a phenomenal lap there. A Sector 2 purple and a Sector 3 personal better. 122.1 sees him sat on provisional pole for the time being with the very short time we have remaining in this session. His nearest rival, uh, the car just in front of him there. It's Will Inglis. So these two uh, getting ready for a bit of a qualifying rivalry already uh, but uh, Alex Smith doesn't want to give that up just yet uh, because uh, he's just set a little purple sector one as we head through the first uh, few corners fantastic circuit this as we've already mentioned to if you can cast your minds back uh, 12 months ago near enough to the date uh, this was of course the first circuit, the first circuit that this the, the new RSS Supreme made its debut on uh, and what a fantastic art has been for the few seasons that we've run it so far as we see uh, Alex Smith certainly enjoying his uh, 26.3 for the first sector has lost out through the second sector uh, where is he now we'll try and follow him along I can tell you uh, that we are running uh, down uh, towards the final couple of corners already now it's actually a surprisingly fast circuit is Kyle Army uh, you have the one final corner now which I'm not even going to attempt uh, to uh, to pronounce and then we have the run down towards Crowthorn as Alex Smith comes across the line and he does uh, in fact lose time on that lap uh, that's to be expected he lost out in sector 3 as well uh, but still looking in very good stead uh, on that provisional, uh, provisional pole rather about 5 tenths of a second uh, ahead of everyone else uh, and his nearest rival as we mentioned is uh, Will Inglis Will Inglis having a phenomenal start to the season of course of course uh, unfortunately we weren't quite able to join in on the action uh, for the first round which is a bitter disappointment so I'm glad uh, that we are now able to uh, have a look at things uh, and uh, Alex uh, Willingless rather of course having a uh, as I say a fantastic start to the season uh, winning both races uh, at the Nürburgring uh, so showing that he means business uh, in this one as we are still on board uh, with Alex Smith in fact because once again he's gone uh, purple sector one but unfortunately uh, it seems to have gone a little bit wrong once again he's got three minutes to go still so should be able to get another couple of fast lap attempts in if he feels like the tyres have got it in him I think he's actually staying in uh, this one he's lost out through sector two once again uh, but I think he's actually staying in it for this lap and maybe he's trying to get around as quickly as possible let's have a look at what else is going on throughout the field Jack Hodson is getting ready to set his first fast lap uh, or is that Jack we're on board with? Uh, I think that is, uh, yes, that's Jack we're on board with. As he uh, will be coming across line in just a moment, apparently, unless he's under the floor. Uh, either way, let's go back on board with uh, the likes of Alex Smith, uh, Will Inglis. We have quite the train of cars here uh, in qualifying as we all come across the line now, heading down into Crowfield on that first corner, then being led uh, by Steve Knight. Uh, and someone going wide there. Is that, that is Alex Smith. He's abandoning this attempt. He's going to have to get out fairly quickly. Of course, he's got to dive back into the pits. That locks your controls. You've got to get back out and uh, get ready for one last attempt. So you're going to have to do that really quite sharpish. we go on board with Alan Matthews now uh, it doesn't look, look like I have missed off the livery pack for Alan Matthews so I do apologise for that one, that will be fixed uh, in between uh, this uh, session and race one, we'll get that amended for you uh, and we can t I can tell you though that although we can't see his livery, I can tell you he's in P3 at the moment so it is uh, looking in good stead, ignore what it says on the timing tower there is Alan Matthews in P3 with a 123.2 uh, uh, is his best attempt so far so a good few tents between him uh, and uh, Will Inglis. So it's a very nice, uh, strong top end of the field there uh, so far in this session. As I say, unfortunately not able to go on board with Jack Hodson uh, for the time being, but he seems to be making good progress. Currently uh, a low 124, in fact 124.0, and he looks to be improving on that on this lap. So we'll see after this attempt if we can jump in with him. However, as we head back on board with Alex Smith, there's only a minute to go in this qualifying session, and he's just coming towards the end of, oh, uh, yeah, they're, they're about uh, halfway through uh, his outlap at this point in time. So let's see, uh, has he got, he's got some nice clean air here. Uh, so he is in good stead, probably in the best position he's been all qualifying session. He hasn't got uh, any traffic to worry about. He's got a fresh set of tyres on the car. Uh, so it should be a good one of course the track also rubbering in towards the end of the session as well so let's see what Alex Smith uh, can do for one final push here in qualifying I uh, just want to give it a quick look at what else is going on no, uh, Andrew Brammer uh, in fact no that's Paul Brady rather is doing a very nice job indeed currently 
I can tell you, uh, is uh, not showing on the timing system, unfortunately, but is registering as P4 uh, in the game at the moment. Uh, so we'll see uh, what we make of that in just a moment as we'll go back and board on the, with Alex Smith briefly. But let's have a look at what else, uh, what else is going on. We have Willing Gliss uh, currently running in P2. He looks to be losing time uh, on this lap. I don't know if you can see there in the bottom left-hand side uh, of the screen there is the predicted lap time. That's currently at 122.9. Then we have Alan Matthews. Alan Matthews currently predicted a 123.8. That will see a nice improvement uh, for him. Then we have Paul Millman currently running, or was running P3 in this session, now uh, P4. And then we're going to go back on board with Alex Smith because he is currently uh, heading down towards... Oh, I was just passed through the clubhouse bend rather and now we have some uh, vast elevation changes uh, for him to negotiate it looks as if the predicted uh, time has unfortunately disappeared for us uh, but I can tell you he's looking very racy indeed he has through the first sector has lost out actually uh, but it seems to be a nice consistent time as there are thereabouts with the likes of Willing Gliss uh, has made up time compared to Willing Gliss through sector 2 Willing Gliss actually setting a purple sector 3 uh, for that last attempt he's made it round has Willing Gliss for another fast lap attempt uh, so it's going to be very competitive indeed towards this last part of qualifying that is for sure now as we see uh, Alex Smith come across uh, the line in just a moment's time is wiggling with a he's decided to abandon that lap uh, and is wiggling in celebration I think he knows he's fairly confident uh, that there is uh, not much else he needs to do has he been too confident too late though he's only a couple tenths down is Will Inglis he can make that up in the final sector if he's uh, very speedy indeed he's got looking like he's going to make another half a second on this lap that's very impressive indeed that disappears so Somewhat as we head uh, down towards the most northerly point of the circuit and then run down through the final sector now. Fantastic corner names at this circuit, actually. Likes of Mineshaft, Crowthorn, Clubhouse Bend, uh, and then the one that uh, I think there's Leopard or Cheetah or something like that as well, uh, but I just can't quite. Quite pronounce some of them, unfortunately. Uh, apologies for the mic dipping out there as uh, Will Inglis comes across the line. It is a 122.3, so very close indeed. 170 miles an hour through the speed trap. Uh, I have a feeling that 248 is probably a bit of an anomaly. Uh, but, uh, yes, yeah, some very competitive running towards the top end of the field there. But it is Alex Smith who will take the crown uh, here in qualifying. Will Inglis uh, has to settle for P2 in the end, but we'll see, uh, as we saw in the first round, impressive race performance from him. I'm sure we'll be in for an exciting battle. So don't go anywhere we'll catch you in just a few minutes one again we'll catch you in just a few minutes on the grid
And we are here on the grid, ready for race one here at Kyle Army now. Uh, apologies, we weren't able to get Alan Matthews' livery sorted in time for race one, but we're ready for the next round, uh, round three. Uh, and uh, as I say, yeah, all lined up, ready to go, looking very exciting indeed. I saw Alan Matthews' car, actually, the push-to-pass system uh, was actually being uh, deployed there on the grid. So that's an interesting strategy. We'll see uh, how that goes. I've actually now had some seat time in this car, which I'm sure we'll delve into in just a moment. Uh, but uh, we're getting ready now. The revs start to rise uh, here for the run down towards Crowthorne. It is, in fact, six red lights on the gantry as the drivers get ready for their launches. And we are away. Alex Smith gets a decent launch there, as does Paul Brady. In fact, Will Inglis losing out ever so slightly. Paul Millman uh, getting involved as well, using the push-to-pass system. Who's going to be latest uh, on the brakes here in just a second? Will Inglis edges out in front, uh, but it's going to be Alex Smith, who has the inside line. But Paul Millman, with a fantastic bit of braking there, ends up taking the lead of the uh, race momentarily. He has to dive back, though, and settle as he runs a little bit wide. Alan Matthews now into P2. Will Inglis down into P4 after all of that. What a start for some drivers there. Uh, that was fantastic as we on board once again with uh, Alex Smith here. Let's have a look at what's going on uh, in the rest of the running. Uh, yeah, but Paul Millman looking so edgy and so confident on the brakes there. Uh, that was a fantastic little bit of overtaking and uh, very good to see some excellent race craft as well. He realised it wasn't going to stick and didn't end up uh, making any type of contact as Paul Brady uh, running in P5. Jack Hodson in P6. Guy Swarbrick in P7. Barry Clayton in P8. Uh, he's getting ready to set and make an overtake uh, on uh, Guy Swarbrick as we head down towards the clubhouse bend. Uh, and in fact Willingless has been able to find his way past Paul Millman now Paul Millman looking somewhat under threat in fact uh, from Paul Brady here as we see uh, side by side at this point as we're running into the final sector now we've just hit the most northerly point of the circuit Paul Millman up the inside briefly but it's going to get boxed off by Paul Brady uh, and then we have uh, the run down through Mineshaft and the final part of the circuit ready for another uh, lap here at Kyle Army what a fantastic track it is promote some excellent overtaking and we're on the start finish straight once again uh, using that bit of slipstream there we see uh, who is that that is Jack Hodson uh, looking very eager to get past M Paul Millman indeed he's going to have to wait for it though because as we've seen Paul Millman heading into turn one is uh, uh, quite ready for a battle here he's not going to try the same heroics once again this time round though doesn't feel like uh, he's in the position to do so probably uh, as we see Paul Brady still in P4 very close field indeed at this stage in the race Going back on board with Alex Smith once again. He's had a decent getaway, in fact. Uh, one and a half seconds from the rest of the field. That is, uh, compared to the rest of the field, quite a comfortable margin. Uh, as we see uh, Alan Matthews still in P2 at the moment. Uh, Willingless in P3. And then we have a decent jump uh, down to P4. Where Paul Brady, Paul Millen and uh, Jack Hudson are. And in, in fact, you conclude Barry Clayton in that as well. Uh, this uh, quartet embroiled in battling. As we see a Willingless has been able to get past Alan Matthews. Not quite sure what caused that. Potentially a little flick of oversteer uh, caused him to lose some momentum. And has seen, uh, in fact, Alan Matthews losing quite a bit of momentum. Because here is Paul Brady up the inside. They are side by side. Pretty much wheel to wheel. Uh, near enough contact there. But... Uh, uh, Alan Matthews just about defends the position. Uh, fantastic racing going on so far. Of course, ever running the soft compound tyre in this series. No reason uh, to jump off that. Uh, in fact, I don't believe it's actually soft compound. And there's contact there. There's contact between Paul Brady and Paul Millman. Paul Millman winning out in that one up into P4. Now, meanwhile, uh, Paul Brady has to settle for P5. Alan Matthews uh, remaining in P3 for the time being. I thought he'd drop back for a very small second. But 175 kilometres uh, through the speed trail. 175 miles an hour, in fact through the speed trap for Alan Matthews. That is very uh, competitive indeed. I imagine he's not running too much in the way of downforce. This is quite a high-speed circuit. After all, a couple of heavy braking zones and tight corners, but after that, it's all open uh, and technical twisties, which is what we like to see. Some fantastic corners on this circuit. Alan, uh, Alex Smith, rather, just having a little bit of a uh, of a skirmish with the grass, but has been able to recover it. Uh, though we see Willingless still running in P2 at the moment. But Paul Millman is uh, currently not being able to relax because there is Paul Brady. Paul Brady uh, keeping him very much on his toes as we head through the clubhouse bend now. Uh, and it is. Uh, the gap is extending just a little bit now, uh, but not enough for him to rest easy. In all of this, though, Barry Clayton is very much uh, kept on them because there is Jack Hodson. Jack Hodson uh, not splitting them uh, too much at all. Of course, we have a bit of a mix going on between the AMs and the pros here. I can tell you that it is, uh, in fact... Uh, well, uh, it looks like it was Jack Hodson leading the AMs. I've got the championship standings here saying that uh, Jack Hodson is an AM, but Jack, I can tell you, is registered as a pro uh, in this race. So we're going to assume that he's going to be taking points in the pro division and should be battling with the pro cars as well.
Elsewhere, of course, the pro race being led by Alex Smith at the moment. He's built up a fairly comfortable gap now with that gap standing at around about three and a half seconds as we head through the first corner once again. I remember back a few seasons now, I believe it was in the Tartus, in fact, where we just had utter chaos uh, in a reverse grid race uh, heading through the first couple of corners, which is a shame because I remember the, ra the race, one of that race being absolutely uh, fine. So hopefully not a repeat of that, though. But Jack Hodson will be wanting a repeat of that. He won't be wanting a repeat of that. The commentator curse coming into full effect once again. Uh, I was about to say he'll be want, uh, wanting to repeat that switchback move uh, on Barry Clayton. That nearly stuck. He'll be wanting to try and make it stick if he did it a second time. However, uh, Jack Hodson... Uh, unfortunately running a little bit wide, bouncing over the kerbs, has to dive back and settle for P6 for the time being. Going on board with Willingless once again. Willingless looking like he's settling into his position in P2 for the time being. Not really focused on what Alex Smith is doing. Alex Smith uh, showing impressive pace in qualifying uh, and has somewhat broken away, uh, broken away at this point. Their best laps of the race so far, although they're not too representative. We're only on the third lap, of course. 123.4 for Alex Smith, 123.9 uh, for Will Inglis. It looks to be Alan Matthews will be Will Inglis' rival uh, in this race, although we've seen... Uh, on a few occasions now, Alex Smith's impressive race pace and impressive pace overall sometimes hasn't quite been uh, rewarded with the results that he deserves uh, through whether it be no fault of his own or just uh, small errors here or there. We've seen over the past uh, couple of seasons that Alex Smith sometimes ends up in these really quite unfortunate uh, late race uh, issues that just uh, basically wipe him out with the points and it is a great shame to see because uh, I think he deserves far more silverware than what he's received uh, throughout his years. Uh, as we see, uh, in fact, Willingless is indeed closing up to Alex Smith ever so slightly, owing to a fantastic purple uh, Sector 3 there. Alex Smith has, of course, responded with a purple Sector 1 on this lap, so good to see uh, the uh, racing still going on, even if they're not quite in each other's mirrors at this point in time. They will be at some point. Uh, Alan Thomas, I think, has unfortunately had some technical issues in the qualifying session. Glad to see uh, that he's been able to join now and take part in this race one. It'll be good practice for race two, the reverse grid race coming up uh, in a little while. Uh, we haven't been able to go on board with Alan Thomas just yet because Alan Thomas is, of course, a newcomer to the series, running number 99 there. So uh, welcome, Alan, the uh, modified registrar, of course, uh, and... Uh, uh, the man who convinced me to buy my latest Alfa Romeo, so thank you for that one. Alan, it has been a fantastic car. Uh, and, uh, yes, he's running P10 in a moment, so he's been able to join, but I'm sure uh, we'll see what he's made of in just a few, uh, a few laps of time. As we go on board with Steve Knight there. Steve Knight, I believe, uh, might have had a little issue with Paul Brady, or that is separate, and Paul Brady has unfortunately tumbled back down the order. That's a great shame, actually. We saw uh, some really impressive uh, racing going on with him. Uh, at the very start of this race so hopefully uh, he can get himself back up fight himself into a uh, a, a deserved position uh, later on in this race Alan Matthews not to be missed out uh, uh, not to m miss out on the racing action has decided no you know what I can see Will Inglis is going for Alex Smith I'm going to go for Will Inglis and has now found himself uh, just three tenths of a second about five tenths of a second nope three tenths uh, we're going back with a bit of a yo-yo there Apologies for the audio cut out there, uh, but yes, he's decided he wants uh, a bit of a battle with Will Inglis, and it looks like we're going to get that now, uh, as two purple sectors through Sector 2 and Sector 3 in that previous lap uh, seem to have done the trick uh, for Alan Matthews, and he is looking very racy indeed as he gets up uh, behind Will Inglis. Now we're going to head uh, down through, uh, I can tell you where we're going to head down, I think I might be having some electrical issues at my house, uh, because everything seems to be uh, kind of cooking, cooking out at random. I think, though, we're still, uh, we're still live, which is great, uh, as we run uh, down towards the Pan ultimate corner in just a moment's time uh, Will Inglis defending the inside line there Alan Matthews uh, looking a little bit more towards the outside there as you can near enough straight line uh, these couple of corners running down towards the final corner just how uh, capable these RSS Supreme cars are uh, now I finally have I can't believe I haven't I think I might have had one little session here or there last year but I finally had some decent seat time in this car now got to know it uh, got to uh, have a feel for it at the Nürburgring circuit in fact getting ready for last week's racing or the last fortnight's racing rather uh, and I can tell you what a phenomenal car it is to drive I couldn't quite get to grips with the push to pass system uh, wasn't quite sure quite sure how to get it to uh, work how to uh, kind of settle in with it and uh, get used to it on a quali push uh, but I was very uh, very comfortable with how the car drove it, it inspired a lot of confidence uh, and felt like a really comfortable way uh, to uh, kind of get yourself in to high downforce racing high downforce open wheel racing uh, and I think that's probably why we get such fantastic racing in this series uh, it has been a great car to drive, thoroughly enjoyed it, and will hopefully get a little bit more under my belt. Uh, as we see 
Uh, obviously, we have a few uh, a few of the Sunday Fun Race uh, events. For those of you who, who haven't seen or heard of them before, we have the Sunday Fun Race, uh, which is where we, uh, in a more kind of casual environment, just uh, jump in, maybe experiment with a few little bits with the game, and uh, just overall have a laugh with a bit of racing. And uh, we've talked uh, here or there. I think we did at least uh, we did stream one at some point the uh, five five nine final baths. Uh, we did stream one event of that once, uh, but. Uh, that might be something that, uh, well, I've been participating in it a little bit more recently, so that might be something that we see... Uh That might be something that we see on stream a little bit more. It will be from the cockpit, though, because I will be driving in it, so that could be something a little bit new. Trying to commentate while driving, uh, as we see uh, Alan Matthews has still uh, be keeping hot on Windlass's heels, uh, as we had a bit of a lapse, kind of um, uh, literally a lapse of uh, concentration, because uh, for about a lap I was just talking utter rubbish there. Uh, but we see Alan Matthews is uh, still trying his best to keep on Windlass's heels. Unfortunately, uh, in the wise words of Murray Walker, it's one thing to catch up to someone, it's another thing to overtake, and unfortunately, uh, Alan Matthews just hasn't quite been able to overtake just yet. He's going to have another crack at it, I am sure, because he's still within a second. Uh, so we'll see what he makes of that in just a moment. Meanwhile, Alex Smith enjoying his time quite nicely here at Kyle Army. He's just passed through the clubhouse bend. He's heading through the S's now. And... Uh, has no major complaints at this point in time. I can tell you he's currently lapping a 123.2 uh, as his previous lap. That's his current pace at the moment. His 123.0 is his best lap. Uh, so I was about to say enjoying those soft tyres nicely. I would like to apologise for the past couple of seasons. I've been calling them the soft tyre. I can tell you they're just called the slick. Uh, it's one set of tyres for this RSS Supreme. Uh, so I do apologise for that one. As we see Alex Smith using that push-to-pass system now as we head towards the penultimate corner here. And Alan Matthews in all this has been able to get, make his way past. Uh, that looked a little bit... Uh, sceptical for Will and Glister. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Unfortunately, we missed on it. I can tell you there was a fairly substantial impact between the two, and I'm not sure if that's uh, Alan Matthews relinquishing the position or that's just uh, Will and Glister being able to take the position back. But there was a, a bit of contact between the two there as Alan Matthews set a purple sector two. They both come across the line uh, right, uh, right next to each other. Attached uh, to his gearbox was Alan Matthews, and Alan Matthews, using that slipstream from being uh, right up his rear wing, is able to make the position back once again, uh, this time a little bit more. More cleanly uh, in P2 then goes Alan Matthews but Willingless says you know what I'm not quite happy with you taking that one back I'm going to do a, the old switch back and take the position once again uh, but he wasn't able to make it stick because there is Alan Matthews back in P2 uh, already what a fantastic bit of racing through sector one between those two drivers there I'm sure we'll have more of that in just a moment. Sam, let's have a look. Barry Clayton's had a very nice drive indeed so far in this race. I think a few other people have had on some unfortunate incidents, and uh, Barry Clayton has just been setting some nice, consistent pace in the low 124s, like we saw in qualifying as well, in fact. Uh, and therefore, he's found his way up to P4. Quite a nice P4 as well. as a couple of seconds to the car behind, and uh, has a nice gap in front of him to kind of settle into a bit of a rhythm. Uh, so let's see what he makes of this race. Uh, and there we have Paul Millman. Can you believe we're over halfway through this race already? It has absolutely flown by Paul Merman in P5. Uh, Guy Swarbrick has found his way past Jack Hudson. Guy Swarbrick leading the AM race at the moment, uh, that is for sure. Uh, as we see Guy Swarbrick actually diving over the curbs a little bit there. Luckily the car not too upset by that. And then we have Paul Brady in P8. What a shame given how his race started. Uh, Steve Knight in P9 and then we have Alan Thomas setting uh, a good few laps at the moment. Currently in the low 132s. Let's see uh, as he settles into his rhythm what he can make uh, of uh, this racing. Uh, as we go on board with Alan Matthews uh, once again. Alan Matthews uh, certainly not able to rest easy just yet. Alan Matthews versus Winning Gliss. It's the, it's the uh, age old tale uh, so many times in touring cars and in the single seaters. Alan Matthews and Winning Gliss have this just impressive ability to find each other on circuit and it's always Well, I was just busy complimenting the drivers there. Thank you, microphone. Uh, yes, they have this phenomenal ability to uh, just make some fantastic racing between each other. And uh, we might get some more of that there as Alan Matthews runs a little bit wide onto the gravel that, uh, that allows Willingless to catch up just that little bit more, uh, about half a second apart these two now as we run uh, down uh, to the highest part of the circuit. That doesn't make too much sense. Uh, and there we have sector three coming up in just a moment's time there. Predicted at 1 minute 23.4 for Alan Matthews this time round, and at 1 minute 23.7 for Will Inglis. Not quite sure what happened at the start of the lap uh, for Will Lerber. Let's see if he's able to catch up once again. He's going to have the advantage of not only the slipstream, but the push to pass system as well. Uh, and there we have Paul Millman actually just set a very nice uh, first sector indeed uh, as he's looking uh, at a low or mid 124 at the moment uh, which will uh, match his best lap 
over the race so far. Uh, Guy Swarbrick not to be outdone, also setting personal best sectors as well. About this 10 minute stage, uh, the tyres aren't too dead yet, in fact they might be quite comfortable given how your race has gone, uh, but the fuel load starts to get lighter and the track starts to rubber in as well. Uh, so the pace starts to really pick up uh, as through the speed trap though, 177 miles an hour for Guy Swarbrick, very impressive indeed. As Alan Matthews uh, currently in P2 then, about half a second separating them, we thought maybe a move was going to happen heading into Turn 1, it wasn't to be this time round, so we'll have to wait and see uh, how this goes in just a moment's time. They're not battling each other through uh, the S's this time round, but they are certainly uh, keen to do so. I also want to give mention to Guy Sorbic and Jack Hudson. They are uh, certainly not far apart at all. In fact, Jack Hudson gaining a little bit through uh, the first sector in comparison to Guy Swarbrick. So we'll see uh, how these two battle on later into the lap. Uh, already less than 10 minutes to go in this race. So how uh, time flies. Uh, meanwhile, in all this, Alex Smith uh, just casually... Uh, about eight seconds ahead of the rest of the field. He is uh, very much set, although that gap has shrunk down considerably. I'm not sure what happened uh, through, uh, through the, uh, through the uh, chicane there, or rather the herpin. I can, if I can remember my corners properly, that always, uh, that's always helpful. Quite sure what happened uh, with with uh, Alan, uh, Alex, Alex Smith's car rather there, but he's lost a little bit of his uh, quite comfortable gap. So we'll have to see. How that affects his race as we go back on board with Will and Gliss running down towards the first corner once again only nine tenths of a second separating these two at this point that make that a second as Will and Gliss, oh, Alan Matthews rather seems to have a little bit of a snap of oversteer on the exit of Crowthorn, Crowthorn rather so we'll have to see uh, how that affects his pace in comparison to Will and Gliss as you carry that momentum all the way through to uh, probably the clubhouse Ben really uh, so that could cost him big time and it seems to have done so that nine tenth gap seems to be about seven or eight tenths now or maybe six or seven tenths so uh, not ideal at this point you don't really want to make small errors like that that only spurs Spurs on uh, the car behind in an attempt to catch you up. I'm on board with Jack Hodson now as he's having a look up the inside of Guy Swarbrick. Will it stick? I think it will. Fantastic move under braking uh, from Jack Hodson. Guy Swarbrick left the door open, gave him enough room and Jack Hodson said thank you very much. I'm taking that under braking. Uh, a brilliant move for P6 for Jack Hodson there. Some more points on the board uh, for him as we head uh, towards the later part of the lap. But he's outbraked himself ever so slightly, locked up, and uh, looks for a second as if he was going to relinquish, uh, or looks as if uh, Guy Swarbrick was going to be able to take the position back. Uh, however, he kept enough pace, which is a very fine balancing act. Bal I'll try that again. A very fine balancing act, I must say. And of course, you don't want to run uh, off wide and potentially spin around, but at the same time, you don't want to give up too much pace and allow your opponent to. Uh, a swoop on by and he was luckily able to do so and there is Paul Brady we mentioned he might be having a bit of a late charge uh, in this race he tries to climb his way back through the order given the pace that he's demonstrated so far and that seems to be the case here because uh, look at him he's using that push to pass system a 123.5 the predicted lap uh, in this race his best lap of course a 123.7 uh, and we can see He's already uh, having a look at the cars battling in front of him, of course. Jack Hodson, Guy Swarbrick slowing each other down as they're enjoying their racing. Uh, and this will allow Paul Brady to say, thank you very much. I'm taking this... Uh Allow him to say, thank, thank you very much. I'm taking this track position back. And uh, he might be doing so in just a moment there. As we see Alan Thomas uh, making way for some of the cars there. Now we go on board. Uh, with Jack Hodson once again leading uh, this little train that is forming up. Guy Swarbrick seems to have backed off just a little bit now. Uh, maybe uh, not quite the opportunities for a uh, late overtake in the lap, not quite presenting themselves uh, this time round. Uh, so it's going to be Guy Swarbrick versus Paul Brady. Paul Brady, of course, a pro racer, uh, so it should be fairly easy for Paul Brady to find his way uh, past in just a few moments' time, probably down the start, finish straight, uh, we presume. In fact, there he is up the inside, heading in uh, to the final corner. Not quite yet. Uh, Guy Swarbrick wants to get a good run. Uh, down the start, finish straight, of course, and doesn't need to impede his own race in order to allow uh, the pro cars past. As we see, Guy Swarbrick actually riding over the curbs a little bit there as he tries his best uh, to carry as much speed. 
corner as possible. And there, though, I think it is uh, the potential threat for Paul Brady Overtake because he's carrying a little bit more space uh, on the exit of the corner. Uh, there's the inside line. That guy's probably because very courtesy left open for him. Uh, but guy's still carrying a lot of pace. In fact, he might try and take that position back if Paul Brady isn't too careful, although it seems to be settled now. Paul Brady up into P7 on the road. Uh, meanwhile, all of this is happening. Alan Matthews uh, and Will Inglis uh, still lapping quite nicely. The battling seems to have settled down ever so slightly now, uh, but uh, certainly is still uh, threatening to happen. <laughs> meanwhile, I'd just like to point out Alex Smith, uh, 122.4 on that uh, on the, his best lap so far it's predicted to be a 122.2 on this one he's gone purple uh, through sector three of course that prediction we can probably ignore in fact because you know it's we're only at the start of the lap as we see flames on the overrun uh, heading through the clubhouse bend there uh, we'll see what Alex Smith can do. As, as I mentioned before, you know, the, the fuel load gets lighter, the track gets more rubbered in. We might have to start worrying about tyres in just a moment's time. Uh, but still, the pace should get just a little bit better uh, for some of these drivers as uh, Commentator's Curse kicks in once again. I, as I mentioned before, you know, Alex and his late race look, I probably shouldn't be uh, staying on board with Alex Smith this late into the race because you never know what could happen. But it seems to be the gap between Alan Matthews and Willingless has closed up ever so slightly. Now, Willingless looking very racy indeed uh, behind the uh, livery list car of Alan Matthews. Do apologise for... Contact, in fact, both on the push to pass system to try and make up for the time lost in that corner. They are pretty much neck and neck. Who is going to come out in the lead in this one? It's going to be Alan Matthews who has the inside line for the next braking zone, but out in front is Will Inglis. He can box him off. Can he? No, he's going to break too late. Has to take the position back. Uh, Alan Matthews does, and we run down towards the final corner in just a moment with Alan Matthews in the lead once again. I think that is the benefit of no livery as uh, the Alfa Romeo uh, F1 uh, or stake Alfa Romeo F1 team uh, has learned. Uh, you know, you don't run any livery on your car. You run just bare carbon, you'll save a little bit of weight. And that seems to be the strategy that Alan Matthews, or rather I have thrust upon Alan Matthews. So you're welcome uh, for that one, Alan. Uh, but yes, if you haven't seen the livery already, fantastic, uh, fantastic looking car. I'm very much looking forward to uh, this season's F1 running. Uh, but they appear to have taken inspiration uh, from us. And uh, also the car was launched on a live stream. It uh, or rather leaked on a live stream. It was supposed to come out later on in the show, but they decided to show it a little bit early. Uh, but there is Will Inglis having a look at an early move, potentially. Uh, wasn't going to make it work from that far back, though. Alan Matthews very much hot on his heels, making sure Will can't take that position just yet. Meanwhile, Paul Brady and Jack Hudson trading positions there. Paul Brady still side-by-side -side with Jack, in fact. As we see, he just about edges out as we head uh, towards the end of the S's. Meanwhile, the corner actually named the S's is coming up in just a moment's time here for Alan Matthews and Will Inglis. Alan Matthews still in the lead, though. Uh, still in the lead, though, rather. And uh, we can just see there, if you look at the bottom uh, left of the uh, bottom left of, the, of your screens there, folks, you can see his best lap, 122.7, and he's predicted the 124.1 or 124.0. It just goes to show how much time you lose while battling. Uh, it really is. It really is something you want to try and avoid as much as possible. As fun as it is, it can really hamper your race. Because in all of this, despite the incredible pace that uh, these two drivers have demonstrated and that the advantage that they've demonstrated for the rest of the race, we can see that Barry Clayton, who has had to work his way up through the ranks, uh, so to speak, uh, in this race, as he's on the push to pass system crossing the line there, is all of a sudden only a couple of seconds off the back of P2 and P3. So if anything goes awry for these two drivers uh, battling for P2 on the podium, you could soon see uh, Barry Clayton uh, usurping them and taking a spot uh, on the podium there, which would be uh, really quite a, uh, a turnaround in fortunes uh, for him in this race. He's uh, demonstrated some excellent racecraft. In fact, could be uh, arguably my driver of race one, really, because of just how well uh, he's worked his way through the order. Uh, turning around what has been a somewhat disappointing qualifying session for him, I am sure. I'm sure he wanted to do better than he ended up coming out with. He certainly can. We know for just how much pace he has. Uh, but yeah, a very impressive race for Barry Clayton indeed. Meanwhile, Paul Brady has pretty much dispatched. Uh, oh, well, no, what has happened to Willing List? There, we're going to go back and board with him. Uh, he's, has he finally cracked under the pressure after 25, near enough 25 minutes race, uh, racing action here? Barry Clayton, as I mentioned, if something goes awry, has soon found himself with a bottom, uh, with a spot on the podium, rather. Um, that is very impressive indeed uh, for Barry Clayton. I'm sure he's quite happy with that one. Willing List will be kicking himself, given how round one went, especially that nice... 50 point lead in fact we'll have a quick look uh, at the championship standings for you now it's Will Inglis in the lead with 50 points Paul Brady with 33 uh, so uh, not a race to remember for him Paul Millman with 27 uh, this was quite a solid race for Paul Millman actually especially given the pace he demonstrated uh, at the very start Alex Smith uh, this will 
uh, be a great boost to his uh, championship charge here. 26 points from round one, but he's going to come away uh, with uh, near enough the same number of points already, especially if he takes the fastest lap. Um, in race one of round two then we have Rob Whitney unfortunately uh, having some technical issues I believe uh, not quite able to make uh, this round which is a great shame then we have uh, Guy Swarbrick uh, in the AMS he is currently leading with 40 points Jack Cotton matching him with 40 points uh, although I'm yet to see what we'll find out we'll know by race two what um, division he is taking points for and then we have Steve night with 36 points so it's actually very close running indeed uh, in the am running uh, as usually is the case it's uh, it's great it's great racing in the ams uh, the time at nearly hitting zero The time nearly hitting zero, that, as, uh, well, that was my third attempt of saying that, the microphone decided it wanted to cut out just at the right moment. Um, the time of hitting zero then, uh, as we see Barry Clayton getting very close indeed uh, to the rear wing of Alan Matthews. He is on an absolute charge, is Barry Clayton. Let's look at his pace at the moment, 122.9. Um, the only driver, other, uh, in fact, no, there's a couple of them now. It's only Alan Matthews, Barry Clayton and Alex Smith who've touched the 22s in this race so far. He's on the push-to-pass system, is Barry Clayton, in that very luminescent uh, RSS Supreme. Running down towards Turn 1, and he's got more pace uh, compared to Alan Matthews, but is looking at the outside there. Not quite ready for the overtake yet, but has he set himself up? We'll try that again. Has he set himself up nicely for the exit of Turn 1? He has. He's keeping on him, uh, heading through the S's now. And there's only half a second between uh, the man who has sat in P2 for so long and Barry Clayton, who has had, who's had to work his way up through the field. And he's on a last-minute charge. And we've got one lap to go in this race as we go on board uh, with uh, Alex Smith. Uh, Alex Smith about 10 seconds clear of the rest of the field, 180 through the speed trap. So the low downforce setup working well for these drivers uh, who are running them. Uh, and we'll join him as soon as we can for a bit of a parade lap. As we see Alan Matthews managing to keep Barry Clayton at bay uh, for the time being. Willing has dropped off a little bit from the back of them. At one point, he looked like he was threatening for a uh, for taking the podium back. Uh, as we get ready to go on board uh, with uh, Alex Smith here. Hit zero as we have one last lap to go for Alex Smith now as he uses that push to pass system. Uh, and we now... Uh, in fact, no, I do apologise. That was uh, Alex Smith taking the race win. We see Willing Gliss has been able to take P3 back from Barry Clayton, but Alan Matthews comes across the line in just a moment. He will keep uh, P2. Alan Matthews, P2. Willing Gliss comes home to round out the podium in the end. P3, Barry Clayton. Unfortunately, there was hope for a spot on the podium for him. He has to settle for P4, but what a charge it has been throughout uh, this race. Then heading round uh, the final corner is uh, Paul Millman, and I think we have a bit of a gap. There, but I just want to give the proper congratulations to Alex Smith for a fantastic drive throughout all of this race. He just looks so calm and so ready as Paul Brady comes in P6, Jack Hudson P7, and Guy Strawberg will come home in a minute in P8. But yes, what a fantastic drive uh, for Alex Smith. A thoroughly deserved victory. Uh, he looked so in control of this race. A thoroughly uh, deserved victory, as I say. His best lap at 122.4, uh, really flying along uh, throughout this race. There we have Guy Robert will be coming home uh, to lead uh, the AM charge, potentially, uh, and take uh, the, we're going to say, provisional AM race victory there. P8. And then we have a little bit of a wait for Steve Knight uh, to come home uh, in P9 in just a moment's time there. Steve Knight will be rounding out. Uh, Black there, very impressive indeed. And then we have uh, Alan Thomas, who's just rounding out his running and getting some uh, practice in ready uh, for the reverse good race coming up in just a moment. I was waiting for it. Some Alex Smith victory donuts. What a sight to behold. Uh, fantastic there. Uh, some very, uh, some nice more... Uh some more subtle victory donuts, but very well executed. So I'll give that a, 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 an 8 out of 10 uh, for victory donuts on that one, Alex. Uh, Alex. Uh, well done. Uh, do we have any more donuts uh, from any other drivers? No, I think we're just waiting uh, for race 2. The reverse grid race coming up in just a few moments' time. Uh, so don't go anywhere. No, we're not, sorry. Unfortunately, I missed that one. I just wanted to dive on. We're having more victory donuts anyway. Alex Smith has just executed the most brilliant drift I've ever seen pulled off in an open wheel car ever. He was full opposite lock. That was phenomenal. Uh, 
I don't have the authority to do this, but I'd just like to declare Alex Smith the 2023 uh, Formula Alpha champion. Uh, for that one, that looked brilliant. Anyway, we'll catch you in just a few moments' time for the reverse grid grace. Well, here we are, folks, on the grid, ready for race two, the reverse grid race now, of course. Uh, we have uh, mixed, in fact, the classes The classes are now mixed for reverse grid uh, running. Uh, that is uh, a little bit of a change we've had for this year's running. Uh, but I can say it is Steve Knight on pole. Then we have Guys Robic P2, Jack Hodson P3, Paul Brady P4, uh, Paul Wimbledon P5, Barry Clayton P6, Will Inglis P7, Alan Matthews P8, Alex Smith P9, Alan Thomas P10. And we get ready now as the revs start to rise for another fantastic and hopefully thrilling 25 minutes here at Kyle Army. It's six red lights on the gantry and we get ready for the getaway in just a time, uh, in just a moment's time and we're away and there seems to have been a bit of lag there as all the cars kind of gently boop their ways out of the ground. I think that is boopage. I think we'll give that one uh, as we have a few. Oh dear, that's boopage. As uh, Steve Knight has found his way into the infield there as there's contact between him and Paul Millman. Uh, that means Paul Brady now leads this race. Willie Gliss in P2, a much better start for him. And there is Guys Rorick up in P3, leading the Am Charge uh, at the moment. Then uh, Jack Hudson running in P4. Alan Matthews P5. Alan Thomas uh, in P6 at the moment. As we see, he's under pressure now from Alex Smith. Alex Smith, race one winner, of course, as Alex Smith uh, is not ready for an overtake just yet. He's uh, picking his moment and picking it wide, of course, as the race uh, is 25 minutes long. He doesn't need to pick his moment just yet. Had a look up the inside and put Alan uh, Thomas very ready on the defensive there, heading around the outside. And um, we go on board with uh, w Will Inglis as he's trying to catch up to race leader uh, Paul Brady. Paul Brady, one of the quicker cars uh, in the previous session, uh, so he's going to have his work out for him, is Will Inglis. Alan Thomas, unfortunately, contact between him and Alex Smith. Alex Smith goes absolutely flying into the tyre wall there. Hopefully he can recover uh, from that and get back in uh, into the action in this race. But I can tell you there's substantial damage uh, all over his car there. In fact, it's come up on the damage indicator. It is uh, pretty much uh, a, a, a very poorly car indeed. As we see, Will Inglis and Paul Brady very close uh, together as we come round to the final quarter already. 410 separating them and Paul Brady's made contact with the inside wall that is a disaster for him that's knocked out his rear, is knocked out his front wing uh, and has dropped him all the way down to P5 what a sudden impact that was uh
Will Inglis finds himself in P5 now uh, with Alan Matthews in P2 under pressure from Geis Robic. Geis Robic fancies his chances for a uh, spot um, uh, in P2 on the road uh, and under pressure though from Jack Hodson. Jack Hodson, of course, uh, his rival in race one as well. We can have a brief update on the championship standings at some point. I can tell you Jack Hodson did take points in the pro running uh, from that previous race. So we're classing Jack Hodson as a pro runner uh, from here on out. Uh, and there is Willinglist then in the lead by about two seconds already it's been a great start for him uh, owing to uh, I think unfortunately a couple of other people's misfortunes uh, we see uh, Paul Brady dropping down to P5 under pressure from Barry Clayton potentially in just a moment let's see uh, how their pace compares unfortunately for Alan Thomas uh, he's dropped uh, down to P10 but is keeping honest uh, with Alex Smith uh, for the time being so let's see what he makes of this race would be great I think as a newcomer to the series to have someone like Alex Smith uh, in front somebody you can learn from somebody you can follow uh, and uh, do his best uh, to try and keep up with it would be great to have that reference in front of him as we see Jack Hodson then in P3 on the break and got the move uh, done on uh, Guy Swarbrick but compromised the exit at the corner and Guy Swarbrick says you know what I'm going to go for the old switchback however the way Kyle Army set up if you have a look at the, uh, the Cheetah that's the name of the animal based corner and it's just come back to me um, if you have a look at uh, the way Cheetah set up it promotes the kind of uh, the, the almost kind of long way around there and it has allowed Jack Hodson to stay in front for the time being uh, but I imagine Jack, uh, Guy Swarbrick is going to fight for that one uh, as Willingless is already 2.7 seconds ahead uh, now the battle but between Willingless and Alan Matthews looks like it's going to continue on however the stakes much higher this time around it's for the lead uh, of the race if Alan Matthews can catch back up Jack Hodson in a very good position here indeed and there's contact between Paul Brady and Guy Swarbrick Paul Brady uh, in P7 at the moment whereas Guy Swarbrick he is in P4 uh, so not quite sure how that occurred uh, but it did according to the timing system there is Barry Clayton taking a little bit of a wider line carrying a bit more speed in comparison to Guy Swarbrick uh, and uh, catching up uh, at quite the rate it must be said Barry Clayton uh, will be hoping for uh, a, 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 some uh, actually we have Paul Brady having more disasters uh, to talk about in this race he's had contact with Steve Knight and uh, in fact Alex Smith has now had contact with a disaster for Alex Smith unfortunately the weekends just don't seem to be coming together for him um, and what a shame uh, after an impressive uh, impressive race one which saw him thrusted into P2 in the championship uh, from around P5 P6 uh, that now it's got, it looks like it could be all over in this race however he's got a lot of damage but 20 minutes to go and we saw the pace that he had in race one I was about to say could could still be some points on the board for him, but just look at how that car is behaving. I think this could be it for Alex Smith in this race, and what a shame uh, given the pace that he's demonstrated here at Kyle Army. Seems to be a personal favourite of his. As Barry Clayton running in P4 at the moment, under pressure from Guy Swarbrick potentially, as Barry Clayton is doing his best to catch up to the legs of Jack Hudson, fighting uh, once another shot at the podium in race two here. So after race one, then let's let's see where we stand. As I believe uh, Alex Smith had more issues. Who's that in front there? Who's had a bit of a? That is Alan Matthews. Alan Matthews and Jack Hudson. Not sure if they had a coming together, uh, but I think that might have been Alan Matthews going off and then Jack Hudson joining him as well. Uh, but for whatever reason, uh, they are now both trying to find a safe opportunity to rejoin the track. It's Alan Matthews who is able to join first, but it's in P6. What a disaster for him. Will Inglis will be uh, absolutely ecstatic with that one. I'm sure. Well, he's lost a very good uh, racing uh, colleague there, so I'm not entirely sure about that one, but it bodes well for him in this race. Guy Schwarberg now in P2, leading the AM running from P2. What a fantastic start to the race for him. Five minutes in and in P2. Let's hope he can keep it up. I really uh, would like to see that. I think that'll be fantastic, to be honest. As we see, uh, after all of these issues, Alan Thomas then, uh, our rookie, currently running in P8, uh, showing that it is definitely a race of attrition, doing quite a nice job indeed. If he just keeps it uh, nice and uh, nice and easy on uh, on the grey stuff, he'll do very nicely indeed in this race, take away some points uh, for his troubles. Uh, as we see, guys, Rory currently running in P2 at the moment, using that push-to-pass system on the way down to Crowthorn. There is Barry Clayton, uh, as he did in race one, found himself uh, with a spot on the podium. And then we have Paul Mullen running in P4, trying to keep Steve Knight at bay using that push to pass system as we run down to the first corner once again Steve Knight in P5 Alan Thomas finds his way into P7 there what's going on it's Alan Matthews Alan Matthews having further issues with his car now, this is uh, this is great news for Alan Matthews but what a disaster uh, for the leaders in this race who have seemingly just all tumbled uh, down to the bottom of the order here 
and Alan Matthews has to dive into the pits. Will that be for retirement or will that be uh, for a repair on the car? Either way, it's not going to be a short pit stop, that is for sure. In fact, has his engine just gone? No, he's he is able to carry on. Barry Clayton appears to have had issues. His rear wing now looking damaged as well. Uh, they're all dropping like flies in this race. Uh, what a contrast. What is it with Kyle Army? Race 1, absolutely perfect and some stunning racing. Race 2, jam-packed with action. But drivers probably not wanting to remember it. So now, let's just have a quick recap as to what's going on in this race, because it has been uh, chaos from start to not finish. We're only 10 minutes in. Can you believe it? Uh, it is Willingless leading this race at the moment. Quite. Uh, we have one reference of calm, and, and it's Willingless. Thank you, Willingless. We'll know that we can always just dive onto you to just enjoy a car just lapping quite nicely at Kyle Army. Then we go to Guy Swarbrick again, to be honest. Another uh, nice, calm and collected driver here running in P2 at the moment, heading into Turn 1. Uh, now, I remember last time we saw Guy Swarbrick on the podium, correct me if I'm wrong, was in the final season of the Tartus running, and it was at Monaco. And it only went wrong for him when I joined in. He came away with a podium anyway, but Guy kindly asked me if I could not look at him whenever he was running... had a spot on the podium because he's quite often taken um, race wins but in terms of on the track it, it, whenever I seem to go on board with Guy when he's running on the podium on track cutting out there once again it doesn't seem to end well it always seems to go a little bit wrong whenever I stay on board with Guy while he's running on the podium however you're doing a great job so far so I'm probably going to do it a little bit more often I do apologise for that one then we have Barry Clayton running it in P3. Uh, he is, uh, again, running quite nicely. Then we have Paul Millman, after all that has found him way, uh, is settling into P4. Steve Knight running P5. Paul Brady in P6. So actually, given how it wasn't looking so great for him at the start of this race, has signed himself in P6. Can't be quite happy with that one. Great to see Alan Thomas then, uh, our rookie for this year, running in P7 at the moment. There is Alex Smith in the background. I think he's had some repairs, but it's two laps down. Uh, so... Alan Thomas should be coming away with some nice points here uh, and hopefully this will uh, boost his confidence uh, in the car. And then we have Alan Matthews running P8 on the road, uh, Alex Smith P9 and uh, Jack Hodson P10. Uh, but again, it's uh, not exactly uh, not exactly a race to remember for these guys. They are two laps down at the moment. And then we have Willingless leading by about 14 seconds already. We have 15 minutes to go and uh, Willingless leading by 14 seconds. It has been... A, a, a strong race for Willingless uh, so far. He's currently leading the championship still with 65 points to his name. That gap uh, to Alex Smith obviously decreasing, but it'll be interesting to see how things fare after race two. Uh, the carnage that has been race two so far. Then we have Paul Brady in P3 with 41 points to his name. He's been usurped by Alex Smith. Then we have Paul Millman in P4, 47. Rob Whitney holds on to P5. And we have Alan Matthews in P6, 18 points to his name. Uh, Alan Thomas is registered in the Pro Division because he's currently on a provisional license uh, on 18 points. Al uh, Barry Clayton uh, is... Uh, although I can tell you that uh, as he's on a provisional license, he's got points in both championships. Uh, there we have uh, Barry Clayton on 12 points in P8. And then we have Jack Cotton uh, in P9 on uh, 6 points. Uh, we have Paul Millman, in fact, getting ahead of Barry Clayton. Having a bit of a disaster there, dropping down in 2P4. Paul Millman, I'm sure, will be very happy. I'll, I'll be also very happy, uh, as much as I'd like to see Barry Clayton get the podium that he deserves. Uh, I think Paul Millman has shown some immense improvement over the past couple of seasons. It'd be great to see him rewarded with uh, not his first podium, actually. Uh, it'll be a fantastic drive for him. There we have Steve Knight side by side with Paul Brady. Steve Knight running a little bit wide. Paul Brady promoted into P5 after that one. Uh, great recovery for him so far. Actually, contact between those two there. Uh, so let's see uh, what goes on in that one. Then we have. Uh, so yes, in terms of the AM running at the moment, it is Guy Swarbrick who leads the AM charge, uh, not only uh, in this race by a decent mile, uh, but uh, in the championship as well, not by quite the same margin. It's 65 points in the AM running for Guy Swarbrick. Steve Knight then, 54 points in P2. Jack Hodson uh, registered with 40 points, but we can ignore that. And then we have Alan Thomas with 15 points, which I think is uh, the representative score for Alan Thomas uh, at this point in time. So then in terms of cars close together on track at the moment, we see that uh, Paul Brady and Steve Knight are quite close together at the moment. Two seconds separating them as, uh, is that Alan Matthews? That's Alan Matthews currently in 
P2 Jack Hudson. There are a few cars actually diving back into the pits. We might see some retirements, which will be a shame. But unfortunately, this race is not going the way that some drivers would have liked. They might choose uh, this race as an opportunity to get a little bit more lapping uh, in for next fortnight's running, which is, of course, at Imola. What a fantastic track uh, that will be. Uh, similar in some ways to this circuit. You've got uh, some elevation changes, some high-speed uh, corners to negotiate, as well as some heavy braking zones. So, uh, and of course, overall, a very fast track. So it'd be great to see uh, that as we go back on board with winning list. But, uh, yeah, so some drivers might be choosing this as a bit of a practice opportunity for uh, the next round at Imola. Well, Inglis, meanwhile, 17 seconds out from the lead from the uh, next car down. His best lap at the moment, a 123.4. We're getting close to the halfway mark in this race now. It's predicted for a 123.2. Uh, so we're getting to that stage now where the fuel load gets lighter, the track starts to rubber in, and the drivers get a little bit more confident, of course, as they settle into a bit more of a rhythm. Uh, isn't quite so much chaos going on, and we'll see what he is made of. Uh, but we're going to see what Alex Smith is made of. He's coming towards the end of his lap. He's repaired his car, has just set two purple sectors uh, as he comes across the line in moments time, uses that push to pass system it's a 122.8 the fastest lap of the race so far of course uh, points can be awarded uh, for the fastest lap of the race and Alex Smith is going uh, for as much points recovery as he can in this race uh, so we'll see uh, what he makes of that and then we have Alan Thomas doing a phenomenal job in P7 at the moment uh, as he's actually just making way uh, for willing list the leader of this race very nice to see uh, but yes this would be a great little uh, points all for Alan uh, so far uh, as we go on board with uh, Will Inglis once again as we've just seen uh, as he gets past uh, Alan Matthews there's guys Robert crossing the line as well Alan Paul Nimble not too far behind uh, here Alex Smith actually still uh, clearly only just settling in to his, uh, to his true pace in this race which is a shame uh, given what we could have had as he runs a little bit wide there but was on for a purple that time around loses time there I do quite like that but I'm uh, a little bit going to go for a style choice it's not quite as stylistic as I would like it's not I don't think it blends in quite as well uh, with I don't think graphically it's not the most visually pleasing but it's so handy uh, there because it allows you guys to see what I can see on the uh, on the live timing system where you can see corner by corner where he's losing uh, his time it, it, it's a great represent a great visual it, it, it's a great visual aid uh, to what we're talking about in uh, the uh, in, in the commentary as I believe there's been a bit of an issue between Alan Matthews uh, and Alan Thomas there as Alan Thomas is actually negotiating with some um, aero damage as well in this race Not to be beaten, not to be beaten though. Uh, we see that winning list is starting to pick up the pace as well. With just over ten minutes to go in this session, uh, and it's a one twenty three point one on that previous lap. He's looking to get uh, there, thereabouts this time around. In terms of quick cars on track, it is uh, the two quickest are Will Inglis and Alex Smith. Alex Smith, uh, I was about to say comfortably in the 122s, he's dropped it back into the 123s again, but only ever so slightly. He's pretty much matching uh, Will Inglis' full pace, so it could have been a case of what could have been, unfortunately, uh, in this race. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see how these two... Uh, we'll just have to wait for another round for these two to enjoy their battle. We're already 10 laps in, can you believe it? Very fast circuit here at Kyle Army and some, uh, some certainly uh, some action packed running uh, to report on this evening uh, to keep us on our toes. Two cars that I do want to have a look at actually are Paul Millman and Barry Clayton. These, of course, are both pro runners uh, and are lapping. Uh, it's going to be quite interesting, actually. They are the two closest cars on track at the moment. Paul Millman uh, wants to hold on to that podium position, of course. He's currently lapping in the 125.4 region. That's his previous lap. His best lap, 125.0. Compared to Barry Clayton, his previous lap, 124.7. And a 124.3 is his best lap. Now, at this rate... We have a good few laps to go and only a few seconds. We should see a
we should see a battle forming up between these two cars in just a couple of laps time uh, Alex Smith still setting the purple sectors as he's just set a 122.5 clearly the fastest lap of the race so far so he's going for that point I think uh, any, uh, every little helps of course it could come down to the absolute wire later on in the championship so we'll want as much, uh, as much of a boost as he can as he gets ready to start another lap it's not going to quite match his previous attempt at this one but let's see what we can do on another fast lap here we might stand board with him for a quick go around Kyle Army As we see now, he's just uh, making time through the first sector. Now, 122.4 is predicted at the moment. I want to give mention, uh, to it seems to be that uh, Barry Clayton, unfortunately, on our previous lap, had a bit of an issue. Uh, dropped back from Paul Millman there, uh, 130 on his previous lap, uh, which is obviously not representative of his true uh, performance. And he's, uh, as a result, has dropped back a little bit, but he's trying to make that back up now, a personal best through the first sector. Not quite there in the second. We'll see what he does now as he comes across the line in just a moment's time. He comes across the line here using that push to pass system uh, to go uh, and improve on his best lap. In fact, that was, yes, that was his best lap at 123.9. So into the 123s for Barry Clayton now which is great to see. Alex Smith, and well, busy setting those purple sectors, still has a little bit of company this time around. So a bit of a slipstream uh, for that short run down to the start-finish line uh, should help his cause just that little bit. Oh, unfortunately, though, he's lost too much time through the uh, second two-thirds of the circuit uh, and uh, is now past Steve Knight, who's also using that push to pass system, so we might see a little bit of a battle between these two uh, regardless. No, it doesn't seem to be the case. It looks to be that Alex Smith very much settled and honed in on uh, on uh, what he's uh, trying to achieve in this race, which, uh, as well as the couple of points he will take away anyway, uh, will be uh, a fastest lap, just uh, to prove to his rivals. As as if race one wasn't enough of an indication, he can cer he's certainly got uh, what it takes here at Kyle Army. Barry Clayton appears to be closing up to Paul Millman ever so more once again. That gap now starting to get about three seconds. It was at this point about five minutes ago uh, where, unfortunately, Barry Clayton suffered an issue that put a bit of a stop to his charge. We'll be hoping uh, that uh, that history doesn't repeat itself, really, as we get ready to start another lap here uh, at Kyle Army with five minutes to go in this uh, race. It seems to be the battle is going to be going on between Paul Millman and Barry Clayton. Willing list, can we? I know we haven't seen too much of him in this race. A phenomenal effort here. A 25 second gap to Carr in P2. He's looking very comfortable indeed uh, and will be quite happy with how his championship char uh, charge is going. Although race one was, was uh, uh, not exactly perfect for him. He still had a very good race indeed. A very enjoyable race to watch as well. Uh, Guy Swarbrick will also be quite happy with how uh, race one is starting. Because what a drive from him so far. We'll be coming home not only with the Amrace victory of course. Uh, as he's uh, been rightly, rightfully rewarded with it on a few occasions. Uh, we'll be coming home. Uh, with a spot on the podium on the road as well, uh, which I think deserves a mention here. But that gap between uh, Paul Millman and Barry Clayton uh, slowly but surely is closing up now. We've got five minutes to go in this race, and at this rate, we will be enjoying a battle between Paul Millman and Barry Clayton, two uh, drivers who have demonstrated excellent racecraft in the past, so I'm looking forward to that one. Meanwhile, in all of this, Alex Smith still busy setting the purple sectors while negotiating traffic as well as uh, Alan Matthews, or Alan Thomas rather, gets out of the way uh, in a rather exuberant manner there. I'm not sure if there's actually contact between those two cars that caused that and the game just had a little bit of a freak out. Uh, either way, Alex Smith is getting achingly close to the 121s here, which is just such a shame. Well, uh, not only is it impressive, and first of all, most congratulations for what will be an impressive lap if things go your way. But what a shame it will be if he can get into the 121s or the low 122s, which he looks to be he's going to do, but will be doing it from 8th on the road. Will he get a decent enough run? No, he loses out ever so slightly for the run, but it's still going to be an improvement. A 122.1 uh, towards the end of the lap, though. Maybe the tyre's starting to give up towards the end, but we, for a, threat, uh, for a second, we're threatening the 121s uh, with Alex Smith, which is very impressive indeed. Speaking of threatening, it is now Barry Clayton threatening Paul Millman as we run uh, down towards the end of the lap.
yes, as we run down towards the end of the lap here, Paul Millman uh, is very much looking at what's going on in his rear view mirrors now. Six cents of a second separating them at this point, the closest they have been for a little while. What will Paul Millman do uh, under pressure? I don't think we've seen too much of Paul Millman on the defence, actually, so it could be very interesting indeed. Uh, all I remember is that phenomenal uh, run down into turn one under braking there, uh, and un unfortunately he hasn't quite had the opportunity to repeat that in this race, uh, but we might see some more um, impressive uh, feats from Paul Millman in his battle now as he head down towards the final corner and get ready to start off first. And get ready to start our first proper uh, laps of racing between these two drivers on the push to pass system. Then Barry Clayton. Uh Heads up towards the inside there and makes it look easy, in fact, as we run down uh, through turn one. Uh, that push pass system helping them uh, quite nicely. They deployed it at just the right time. Uh, confidence on the brakes was ahead through turn one and on the exit and this sealed the position. So Barry Clayton now with a spot on the podium. Although uh, if Paul Miller can take any solace in this, Barry Clayton did just that in race one. And unfortunately for uh, Barry, it wasn't to last. Let's see what Paul now uh, can do and now that the roles have reversed. I think we are very much under threat of uh, Will and Gliss taking a 30 second lead in this race, which will be mightily impressive. Uh, it reminds me of the old Matt Daly and uh, Colin Kniff days, uh, really, if we can uh, pull off such a feat. The gap now starting to get. The gap now standing at 29.5 seconds uh, between these two. Make that 30 seconds. Now we have now hit that 30 second marker that we were talking about. And what an impressive drive uh, from Will Inglis. And he will get a, um, a, uh, the, uh, the congratulations he deserves if he ends up coming home in the position that he has got so far. Remember, it's, it's not too late for anything to happen uh, just yet. In terms of lap times then, we haven't unfortunately uh, seen that 121 from Alex Smith at that time. The paces have dropped off a little bit now as of course the drivers start to think about making sure they've got enough fuel and tanks to make it home. Uh, and uh, the tyres not quite as comfortable as they were at the start of the race of course. Barry Clayton seems to be meanwhile uh, pretty much securing that P3 uh, for the time being as the brake discs glow red hot there uh, heading into the, uh, into the braking zone. And uh, he's looking quite comfortable and confident now. If we compare their pace at the moment, although I say that, Paul Millman's just set his personal best sector one. It was there they were with Barry Clayton this time. They're 123.9 on that previous lap for Barry Clayton. That matches. Uh, who does that match there? That matches near enough. Uh, Willie Gliss. So that's a very impressive time indeed on that previous lap for Barry Clayton. Uh, his best, of course, at 123.7. Uh, but yes, Barry Clayton breaking away from uh, Paul Millman as much as possible at this point in time. Paul Brady, meanwhile, is trying his best to catch up. Uh, however, it might be too little too late. And now we actually see that Alex Smith has been able to make up a lap and is now on the same lap as Alan Thomas. I don't think, unfortunately, uh, for Alex, he'll be able to uh, close up the distance between the two at this stage in the race. Uh, but we are actually going to have a look at where Willie Gliss is, uh, is sat right at this point in time because he's not going to be able to make it uh, on to another lap, unfortunately. So we'll have to settle for this being the penultimate lap of this race now. As you see, he does have some of company. It is Steve Knight there as we run down towards the final corner in just a moment's time Steve Knight uh, very courteously uh, moving his car out of the way in a very yeah, very nice uh, manner there for uh, it's not it's not an easy part of the track actually to get out of the way there so uh, props to Steve Knight for that one and we start the final lap of the race now with Will and Gliss we're going to stay on board with him for a bit of a parade lap because it, it thoroughly deserved a 32 second lead uh, at this point in the race as we head through turn one, the car just looking so planted, so secure. Is he going to go for a bit of a burn here? He's got a 26.2 on that previous lap. I'm not sure if he had an issue or if he's just trying to make sure he had enough fuel. Either way, this might be a bit of a last charge from Willing List, potentially, uh, just to show what he is made of. Um, unfortunately, Jack Hudson not quite making it to the end in this race. That's our only DNF, which I think is actually quite impressive when you consider just uh, how chaotic the start of this race was. 
uh, but heading through towards Sector 2 in just a moment's time with uh, Will Inglis now. In fact, now we are deep in Sector 2 as we head through the S's and run down uh, to the uh, run down to the highest elevation part of the circuit. Will Inglis looking a little bit more cautious than he has on the past few laps, and uh, that is certainly understandable. He doesn't want to throw away what has been a decisive uh, victory that is within an arm's reach now uh, as we head through to the uh, third to last corner now. Uh, only a couple more to negotiate, and really it's not even that much of a corner for these very high downforce, very capable cars. And Will Inglis has certainly demonstrated that capability in this race uh, as we head to one last braking zone, heading through uh, that final corner there, onto the start-finish straight, uh, hits the accelerator, gets ready to come across a line to take the race to victory. Congratulations, Will Inglis, for a phenomenal drive there. It really was uh, commanding. Uh, as we see, Guy Swarbrick will be coming home in a few moments time as Steve Knight is classified P6 uh, in this race. And then we have a little... Oh, Paul Milman finds his way past Barry Clayton. What's happened to Barry Clayton there? I'm not quite sure. And we'll have a look at that in just a moment's time. There is Guy Swarbrick, though, coming home. But Paul Milman once again finds himself with a spot uh, on the podium. It's happened again for Barry Clayton in race two. But there is Guy Swarbrick now coming home. to take the race to uh, victory for the AM running and with a spot on the podium uh, overall as well. I think there's going to be some victory donuts from Guy Swarbrick here and they will be thoroughly deserved indeed as we have them from Will Inglis, we have them from Guy Swarbrick, we have them not quite yet from Paul Milne, we have them from a couple of other drives though, we have that from Steve Knight, Alan Thomas taking part which is good to see. Uh, there we have massive contact between Paul Milne and uh, Alex Smith there, not quite sure uh, what was going on as Paul Milne disconnects there. Uh, we have Alan, Alan Matthews has annihilated his tyres already. I hope you are enjoying the new smoke effects, by the way. I think they look quite nice as we have some dodgems now going on. Uh, so there is Willie Gliss uh, in, enjoying his victory. Uh, and what a well-deserved victory it was as well as uh, everyone's now got deflated rear tyres. What a way, uh, a chaotic way uh, to round out what has been a bit of a chaotic race uh, as Kyle Army, as ever, delivering some fantastic action as uh, Alan Matthews car actually on three wheels there. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, not quite ideal, not too healthy for the underfloor and the chassis, uh, but uh, I'm sure we'll be ready for uh, the next round at Imola. And I'm looking forward to the next round at Imola, as I hope you are as well. <laughs> Winning list is still sat there with his smoke machine now. Uh, that should be his new team name, Smoke Machine Racing. Uh, but there is some more victory donuts still ongoing for Alan Thomas. Great to see you getting in the spirit of things, Alan. Uh, you will do well here. But yes, I hope you're ready for Imola in just a fortnight's time. I'm looking forward to that one uh, very much. Uh, so from me this evening, that is all. I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching as much as I've enjoyed commentating. Uh, and I'll see you uh, next week for the touring car action and uh, in a fortnight's time for a race at Imola. So thank you very much for tuning in.